Welcome back, Syndicate members. It is I, Joshua Mammoth, back like a vertebrae and on my way to the Daytona Comic Book Convention. We're hoping to meet a few artists out there and pick up a few independent titles. So sit back and enjoy the video. Welcome back, Syndicate members, and thank you for joining for the breakdown of the Daytona Beach Comic Book Convention here in beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida. Well, actually, technically, it's the land this year and last year. Um, so this is uh, us getting off the highway here, Rachel and I. And um, what did you think of, of last year's convention in comparison? Um, so I thought last year's was really good. Um, I thought this year was even better, though. Um, last year they actually had it in two separate buildings, and this year they just had it in one. And I just thought it was better organized than it was last year. They did have the two buildings last year, um, and I think that was... Uh, a little weird yeah because the one building seemed like it was definitely way big enough and so um in, in last year too they they while they had you know a quote artist area the artist area last year was kind of split up a little bit and so we had to walk around there quite a bit um to actually locate everybody but this year's i mean what did you think of the artist alley this year See, this year was so much better. They had it all um, grouped together, so I thought it was so much easier to be able to not only find them, but kind of see um, their setup a lot easier. And for those uh, syndicate members that are wondering right now, that guy in front of me is not cosplaying. Wow, you think you're funny. <laughs> well, you know, old dude, beard, long hair. Yeah, he, but he doesn't have a tie on, so clearly not. <laughs> That's the only way I saw the difference. <laughs> I, oh, go ahead. I do have to say, though, um, it was only $10 um, for each of us to get in. So that is a great price for a con. I thought it made it so reasonable. And I think it was for the two day it was only $15. So, I mean, what a steal. And it's also uh, good to point out the parking was free, too. And a lot of parking. A lot, plenty of parking. Although we had to park in the back. We, we got there about 11 and they opened at 10. So by the time we got there, yeah, there was a, a lot of people already there. But with the positive spin is the aisles in this con were huge. Oh, definitely. I, you weren't bumping into everyone um, like some other uh, even bigger cons that we've gone to in the past. Oh, for sure. Like Luke could have, have ran a tauntaun through that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but... <laughs> So as you can see here, um, Rachel immediately uh, beelined for the Star Trek booth here. I have a radar for it. And they, this guy had a ton of just uh, some crazy stuff, though. Oh, and stuff I've never seen. So that's why, of course, I spent a lot of time in this booth. Well, um, I didn't get the memo about the Hawaiian shirts either. <laughs> hey, they were just trying to, you know, pay homage to Jimmy Buffett. I get it. <laughs> Yeah, so inside of this booth, um, there, were, there was just so many, like, little eclectic things. And, uh, I, like, overall, though, best, like, well-priced booths. I mean, not just this booth specifically, but all everything there was so well-priced. Oh, definitely. Every time you go to a con, it's kind of like, you know, the con price of stuff. Everything's always marked up. But I felt like some of these prices, I was it was like a steal almost. Well, like that, that bridge set up there. Oh, it was hard to pass that one up. <laughs> that was that was actually a uh, complete Star Trek: The Next Generation bridge set, fully complete in the box for 110. Yes, which is one of the only things missing from my collection. See, but they had such a wide variety of things, even from Barbie to, of course, Star Wars. Oh, there was Disneyland. A, yeah, there was a ton of Star Wars there, and um, they also had uh, like crazy back issues too oh definitely you could definitely get your collection going with those like um after this booth here you'll see that um we, we went into uh cliff's books which cliff's books is located in uh, downtown deland and uh, you'll see like just the overwhelming amount of comic books this guy brought to the con 
And what's crazy is in his actual store in Deland, he has an amazing um, collection of just books in general. So he just is a, a wealth of um, great stuff in his store. Yeah, so, um, well, I guess we got to turn the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> Had to check out, you know, who was um, dressing yeah, there's, up. Yeah, there's Cliff's day. right there. And actually, there was Cliff right there in the black shirt. Yeah, and there was there was just so much space to walk around. Like um, I felt like the last con we went to, um, well, actually I think it was MegaCon was one of the cons we went to that was so crowded. Like we were just getting smushed. Oh, definitely. No, there was actually quite a few people here, but it was able to still, you know, look and be able to um, actually see what you were doing and not be bumping in everybody, which I appreciate. Yeah, and, and actually, another thing to point out, too, is they had uh, food trucks outside. Oh, definitely. Um, they even had uh, a craft soda. Which oh, yeah, the really craft fun. soda. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. And, of course, inside they had ice cream you know, for a hot day in Florida. You have to have that. Okay, here we go. Um, this is uh, Martin Piero of uh, Cosmic Times. Yeah, that setup was great. Oh, it was amazing. His books really drew you right to it. All the color and just the different um, storylines he has. Welcome back, Syndicate members. It is I, Joshua Mammoth, on location at the Daytona Beach Comic Convention. So how are you doing today, Martin? I'm doing fabulous. I'm at the Daytona Beach Comic Convention. Does it get any better than this? It's been really, really good, and I picked up a lot of titles. Um, actually, a few from your booth here. I thank you so much for yeah, that. Yeah, um, so what I, what I wanted to know is um, this one over here. Right here? Deep Space Tragedy? Deep Space Tragedy. Oh, but I love this book. This, is, this was our flagship book for the longest time. This is a story of a teenage robot rock band on the run. It was written and illustrated by Mike Wagoner, who was in the uh, rock band Real Love Diplomats. And after the band broke up, he, wanted to be, he was an artist, so he put his love of Transformers and his love of uh, rock band together and came up with a robot rock band. Uh, he and I worked together on fleshing the story out. When we first met in 2015, we shared our love of Transformers and all things 1980s. And uh, I said, I want to work with you. He says, I want to work with you. So he, he gave me his first issue, and we kind of fleshed out the series from there. Uh, it's a fabulous story. It's, it's set on this planet Cog. The rock band Deep Space Tragedy comes, and he finds out the, the bots of Cog are under the heel of their evil dictator, and rock and roll sets them free, man. And so... Um, this band now, they, they play their own musical, musical instruments or are they built into the actual robots? They're cool, like, light instruments. Their guitars are made of light. And the best part is, since Mike was in a rock, was in a rock band, he actually recorded music for the comic, too. Um, where do you get that at? Uh, Mike had it on his website, MikeWagoner.com. I'm not sure if it's still up, but that's where he has it. Okay, that's awesome, because I, I think I'm going to try to check that out so I can listen to it as I read it. And, and it's actually the song they sing in the book. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, so tell us about some other titles. Um, how about this one here? From Blood is a great book. And this was brought to me by my creative director, Zach Bassett. He and James Wynott had worked on this idea of this super violent story. And I was like, nah, I don't want to do a violent story. That's not my bag. But then I read it. And I'm like, it has this heart to it. And so Zach and I got together. We finished the series, made a three-issue miniseries. And it's like I said, it's a story of a super-powered mental patient. Patient 27 has been locked away for 10 years, has no idea who he is or why he's indestructible. But he and his psychiatrists, they break out and they go on a quest to find out who he really is. That sounds really good. And so I picked up that title as well. Awesome, yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to sitting down and going over these. Because, um, you know, my, my thing is I'm a, I'm a huge independent comic book guy. And that's, too, that's all I do. And so, actually, with that being said, I got a little gift for you here. Magic bag. That's my uh, first publication oh, yeah, there. Right? Yeah. You do comics? I, I sure do. You wrote and drew it? Yeah, I sure did. Oh, you're crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll check this out. Yeah, so that's Dimensional Devastation oh, number sorry, one. Wrong way. <laughs> How's that? You know what? I'm going to read this and I'll review it on my TikTok. Ah, that would be great. Yeah, man. I'm For all sure. I love TikTok, so. All right, well, it was great meeting you. Yes, sir. For sure. So make sure you check it out. What's your, what's your information? Where do you get your stuff out? Go to CosmicTimes.net. I couldn't get the .com. Somebody has it won't give it to me. CosmicTimes.net. You'll find all the links, all of our social media. We're everywhere. Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, or X, uh, YouTube, um, and some, some other stuff I forgot about. I, I don't even know. Like uh, there always, There's always a new one coming up. We jump on them, and it never works out. But. <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel you on that one. All right, well, I'll catch you around, and I'll definitely let you know when that review drops. Awesome, man. Great. Thank you so much. Take care, buddy. And there was definitely a lot of collectibles to be had. This guy's booth alone had wrestling figs. He had uh, records, D&D &D books. CDs, and even vintage toys. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the CDs. And actually, these backpacks were pretty awesome, too. Oh, and there's that pink ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Missed her. Uh, there wasn't a lot of cosplay at this convention, but the ones that were there were definitely awesome. Yeah, look at the green and red Power Ranger right here. Okay, and this is Roland Mann's booth uh, with Silverline. Yeah, it was amazing. He has such a collection. I was actually looking at a Christmas book right there. And what did you think of Roland? Oh, he was such a nice guy. So good to talk to and just entertaining as can be. And very knowledgeable, too. Oh, completely agree. And actually, uh, this is a lot of Silverline's run here that you're seeing right now. Um, up in the top right there, that's the Twilight Grim one um, that I picked up, which was the uh, Daytona Comic Book Convention special. Welcome back, Syndicate members. It is I, Joshua Mammoth, back at the Daytona Comic Book Convention with my new friend, Roland, and uh, he is uh, one of the publishers here for Silverline, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I was, I was about to tell you about the, uh, the name, how the name came about. So Silverline was born uh, in the late 80s. It was uh, me and Stephen Butler and Mitch Bird, and Stephen and I were both big fans of the Silver Age of comics. And so when we started saying, well, we want to do comics that, that capture that spirit of the Silver Age, we kind of want to be like a silver line of comics. And so we're like, okay, yeah, that's us. We're the silver line, right? We dropped the, and it just became Silver Line Comics. And so that's, you know, it's really interesting that you say that because when uh, my wife and I were walking around, I was like, wow, okay, this looks really retro. Yeah. And that's what made us come back around <laughs> here. Yeah. yeah, so that that's awesome because I, I appreciate that oh, cool. for sure. Well, uh, it's funny because you're not the first to say they look retro. Um, most of these were, were done within the last couple of years, so they're not intentionally retro. The only thing I would say is that they come from, you know, my heart, right. and, and my heart is with Silver Age uh, comics. And so if you said this feels like a Silver Age book, it wouldn't surprise me because that's where my love is. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Silver Age fan, too, um, specifically uh, Green Lantern. Okay. So I do cre collect a lot of Green Lantern Silver Age. Um, so tell me about some of your titles here. Sure. Uh, what's, what's, uh, what's your overall favorite one? So um, so probably the, the, the book that moves the most for me is a book called Cat and Mouse. Now, what you see there is that's volume two. We had a volume one in the late 80s, early 90s. It was in the uh, top ten black and white comics. Uh, as d dictated by, as determined by Comic Shop News for about half of the run. So uh, when I got ready to do comics again, this is one of the first things I wanted to do was kind of bring back Cat and Mouse. Now this is not a reboot, and you don't have to have read the first volume to understand this one. But this, the, but this Cat and Mouse is a story of a guy who gets a telephone call from his ex-fiance, and she says, hey, my kid sister ran away. Would you go get her and bring her home? So it's his ex-fiance, so he doesn't really want to do it, but he's studying to be a police officer, so he says, he says, let me see what I can do. So he goes to New Orleans only to find out that the kid's sister was caught up in a human trafficking ring. So he has to figure out how to get her out of the human trafficking ring and get her home. And yes, there are ninjas in New Orleans. Interesting. Ninjas in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I see you have a lot of titles, though. Yes. Um, so... The one I picked up, what was the the name of that one? Was that the one that was over there, Rach? You picked up... It was the Daytona, the one you had special oh, you for... you picked up Twilight Grimm. Twilight Grimm, yes. yeah. Uh, so Twilight Grimm uh, was written by Ari Jones. And Ari Jones is, uh, if you've been reading comics for any number of years, he sh his name should not be unfamiliar to you. He's been writing comics since the late 80s. I, I used to edit R.A. when we both worked for Malibu. Uh, he wrote things like uh, Protectors. He, yeah. Do you remember the Protectors? I, I edited those. Okay. Yeah, and R.A. was the writer. Um, he wrote Sibar with Rob Davis, who is the artist for Twilight Grimm. All right. And Twilight Grimm is a story of uh, Hallowed Heights. It's a divided city, kind of like Berlin was. Uh, there's a wall right down the middle, and it divides the vampires and the humans. 
and the piece has been maintained for years because of the wall but the piece is about to be broken and Twilight Grimm is the one who comes in. He's kind of like a vampire hunter, but he's the one who comes in and kind of maintains the peace between humans and, or let me rephrase that. He tries to maintain the peace between humans and vampires. Okay, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, and that's definitely a, a lot of the books that I do. Um, I have a wide range, but it seems that cool. when I pick up a lot, it's normally horror type type books um, so it is refreshing to get some change from that for sure I think you'll like that Ari is a very talented writer like I said he's been you know he's been he's written comics since the lady I, I, I could I couldn't even begin to you know list them all but I know he did a lot of stuff for me uh, when I was an editor but that was just for me he's done a whole bunch of other stuff as well but uh, very talented I was very excited to be able to work when I relaunched Silverline Ari was one of the very first people I reached out to and said hey man I'm gonna make comics again. You want to, you know, you want to write something? And of course, he was like, "Yes, I would love to." So, and so you mentioned that you worked for Malibu, but I remember when I did my first round, you had mentioned you worked worked for Marvel Comics. So you you did both of those. Well, I became a Marvel editor because of Malibu. I was with Malibu, and if you I don't know if you know if you remember this, but Marvel bought Malibu. Okay. And so I became a Marvel editor because of the purchase. So I went from one day I was a Malibu editor, then Marvel bought us, and then I was a Marvel editor. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I went from being a, um, when, when, with Malibu, I was a line editor, and then when Marvel purchased us, I became a, a managing editor, which really just meant I had more paperwork to do. Gotcha. Yeah, paperwork sucks for yeah. sure. Yeah. And this even, was, even the comic industry. Well, and this was the day when it was actual paper. So we had a, we had a lot of paper, a lot of forms we had to fill out. Uh, we kept a lot of, because uh, there were so many freelancers uh, that we worked with, we had all kinds of uh, sheets that we maintained on them, and that was the, the thing that kind of fell to me to do it, it, for, for our division. Because Malibu formed a division after the purchase. We were kind of a West Coast division, and so I was the managing editor of that. Gotcha. All right, well, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time, and I uh, got a little something for you here, because um, I'm also an independent publisher. So let me make sure I got to get the right book okay, here. Cool. I'll hold this over for you. Thank you. That's not it. There it is. That's my, that's actually my first book there. Oh, cool. Dimensional Devastation. Sweet. So that's that's one of my uh, lead characters, Applehead, and this is my comic universe, basically battling it out. Cool. So you got Applehead and. This is General Laszlo. Okay. And uh, Mookie. Nice. So, well, syndicate members. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for reading this. Great. Well, it's great to meet you. Great to meet you as well. And, uh, I'll hit you up and let you know when all these posts online. That sounds great. Yeah, and uh, Your social media it up. Yep, absolutely. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. And you see me here signing a couple of copies of Dimensional Devastation Number One. I uh, gifted one to Martin and another one to Roland here. another satisfied syndicate member. And uh, this was uh, Brent Larson's booth here. And uh, what did you think of Kalos? Oh, it was amazing. I can't wait to read this storyline. We actually picked up all of them, and it was really hard to pick the different covers because he did have um, quite a variety. Yeah, I think every single issue had a few different uh, variating covers. I think you're right. Welcome back, Syndicate members. It is I, Joshua Mammoth, back at the Daytona Comic Book Convention. And I'm sorry, I just forgot your first name, Brent. Brent. I'm here with Brent, and I picked up a few issues of his book, Chaos, here. You want to give us a breakdown of this book? Sure. Uh, the story is about the uh, little-known CIA-backed uh, space program in the 60s, where they actually sent up a group of astronauts to investigate a mysterious phenomenon and their ship disappeared. And so the CIA covered it up uh, and everyone forgot about it until just recently when one guy comes into the ground, uh, gets up without a mark on him, his new quest, which is to get back to where he has been all this time. And so that's what the whole story is about. Who is he? Why does he want to go back into space? Where has he been? And who is the mysterious group on Earth that is trying to keep him from leaving? 
And that is the gist of the story. So. And there you have a syndicate members. That sounds really good. And, and I'm really looking forward to sitting down and, and reading it. So thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. So, and I'll let you know when this posts up. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. Thank you. And you can see Brent here. We picked up uh, each a copy of one. And um, see there, he has several different covers to choose from. Yeah, they all looked amazing. Um, I really like the one with the fire uh, that you see us pointing to right there. So we had to pick that one up. And what did you think of Brent's uh, actual breakdown of k -less? Oh, he was so good. Um, it made me really want to start reading him right there. It seemed like such an exciting title and something um, a little different than what you're normally used to. Oh, definitely. And I, I'm definitely looking forward to getting and, and on to reviewing it. Okay, and you can see here, this is Rob Davis, and uh, he is autographing the Daytona Comic Book Convention Twilight Grim number one for me as I paw through his art there. Yeah, all his stuff looked amazing also. Okay, and uh, this booth is Haley Martin, and uh, she was the uh, webcomic transferred to printed comics. Yep, and she had quite the variety of stuff. It was great. Welcome back, Syndicate members. It is I, Joshua Mammoth, back at the Daytona Comic Book Convention. And I'm here at another independent comic book booth with another breakdown for you. So, uh, good afternoon. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. And what's your name? I'm Haley Martin. Haley Martin. And could you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've got all kinds of stuff that I've drawn. i got original stuff, marks, but I um, also have uh, my main thing is comics. So this comic, Heroic Shenanigans, is my own original comic that I wrote, draw everything. And I, it's also a web comic. I started out posting it online and now have it in books. Um, it's about superhero summer camp. And then all the ones up here are ones that I've worked on with Silverline. So Bear um, is written by Roland Mann, who's at one of the tables over there. And he, um, so he wrote it. I did all the art for it. It's like a... Um, Winnie the Pooh type story about like a world of living stuffed animals. Um, and then there is The Rejects, which Roland also wrote, and I did the colors for that one. And I believe, yeah, Tommy behind me inked it. Um, and this is like about a group of superheroes or the rejected superheroes. They want to try to make it big, but no one really seems to notice them. And then this one is The Obsoletes, and that um, has two issues out now. The second issue just came out, so I also colored that one, and that's like a sci-fi adventure kind of story and um jose at the table next to me actually um inked that so yes those are all the comics that i've got all right great yeah. thank you i really appreciate that um and so i'll actually be reviewing these books too the ones that i picked up here and i'm definitely really looking forward to it is there any that, that you would recommend that i do first out of the three no, yeah, I'm partial to Bear since I did the most work on it, and I actually did just finish the art for issue two, so that should hopefully Great. be coming out soon, so that might be a good Okay, one. so you, you actually yeah. did all the art and the color? Yeah, so this actually someone else did this. Great. Color, but I did, yeah, all the interior art. Oh, wow, that looks all awesome. That, so. All right, great. Well, I'll definitely let you know when that posts up. Okay, so, awesome. thank you. It was great to meet you. Yes, it's great to meet you, too. Great to meet you, too. This is, uh, so Astral Vengeance number one starts off with a sort of a, an intro story that uh, is sort of a little bit of a, a play on an upcoming comic that we got coming out called Galaxy Gal. The art was done by Bill Walco, who's actually doing uh, the Galaxy Gal issue that we have coming out early next year. So we got a few pages of that. And then once we get through that bit of the story, first few pages, then we jump into our main story, which is the Astral Vengeance uh, issue one storyline. So we've got art by Ariel Medell. And the lettering's done by a guy called uh, Jacob Baskell. These guys are professionals, do a lot of professional art for Dynamite DC Comics. Well, so yeah, that, that looks amazing. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, we work really hard at <laughs> presenting a professional production. You know? So we think everyone's going to love it. There's a lot of humor in these stories. Uh, it's about... Uh, what if there was an alien attack on Earth, but there were no superheroes to stop them? You know, uh, just these guys right here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what would happen? So this is sort of your crew, and you got uh, your uh, ex-military, ex-astronaut guy, and you got your brainy <laughs> Russian hacker, and you got your blonde scientist, and you got one of the enemy, uh, 
Lila is an astral. She's literally one of the enemy. We can show you here. This is the first graphic novel in the series. So this is your attack on Earth. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, get a shot of that. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. And again, the artwork in these uh, is done by the same guys that uh, did the uh, Vengeance issue that I just showed you. So uh, really a professional production. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun making these. And uh, we think people really enjoy them. I, I like to imbue the stories with a lot of humor. That's my thing. So uh, the four people have very disparate personalities. So it makes for a lot of humor in the story. As they kind of bicker and argue about you know, what's the best way to to go about fighting off this, this alien invasion. Uh, so it's an ongoing series. Uh, we've got three graphic novels out right now. And we're working on the fourth one, so we're into issue three. Kickstarter starts this week. So, wow, that's really, that's that's really awesome. Oh, wow, this is space. Oh, is great. Oh, yeah. And independent Book Awards. We've, we've won some of those. Oh, well, great. Well, thank you for taking a minute to talk with me. Oh, yeah, sure. No um, so I'll, uh, I'll definitely hit you up and let you know when I'm, I'll be posting this up. Certainly, yeah. And uh, what was your name? Uh, my name is Jay Magnum. Jay. Jay. Uh -huh. Okay, and that wraps up our walk around the Daytona Beach Comic Book Convention 2023. Uh, what was your overall impression of it, Rach? Oh, I loved it. We had so much fun. We picked up so many good comics that we're going to be able to read and review. I'm super excited. And this was uh, right outside at the swag table here. And uh, there were um, a lot of good pickups, including posters. Oh, definitely. We also found some other conventions that we're going to try out, too. Yeah, um, actually, that Jacksonville convention right there was a pretty awesome magazine. And it had breakdowns of many conventions. And they're all fairly close to us, too. Oh, definitely. Well, being in Central Florida, that's why we're so lucky. Yeah, we definitely had to stock up on that poster because it looked <laughs> great from Silverline. Oh, yeah, that was a Silverline poster, yeah. yeah. Dang, I should have been, went back in there and had him sign that one, too. Well, now you know for next time. <laughs> yeah, but again, you can just see how um, great the setup was. There was plenty of space you have shade here's the food trucks coming up and the weather was absolutely perfect oh it could not have been planned better welcome back syndicate members it is i joshua mammoth back from the daytona beach comic book convention and as you can see i have a large hall here so we were able to meet a lot of artists and a couple of publishers and really have some good discussions which you saw earlier in the video and I just wanted to do a quick breakdown of what uh, everything I picked up here um, before I start the reviewing process um, so first I was able to meet uh, Martin Piero he's from uh, Cosmic Times I was able to pick up the issues numbers one and two of Arthur the legend continues here and then I also was able to pick up uh, takedown number one and then the two books that he talked about, which was uh, Deep Space Tragedy and, of course, From Blood. Uh, next on our uh, rounds that we made, I uh, met Roland Mann, who was the uh, editor for Silverline. Uh, Silverline had a lot of booths set up there, and uh, we picked up a lot of stuff. So the first um, run that we picked up was this uh, Friar Rush here. And this three-pack was uh, actually a, a good deal. This was only 10 bucks for all three of these issues here. And then they also had a very special edition uh, Daytona Comic Book Convention cover here um, that you can see is aut autographed by Rob Davis. And they're actually individually numbered here. Um, so we thought that was pretty cool, so we definitely had to go ahead and pick that up. Uh, after uh, our uh, chat with um, Roland Mann, we made it over to uh, Brent Larson here, and uh, he talked to us about his uh, K-Less series. So um, the breakdown sounded so good that uh, we went ahead and just picked up all four issues here. Um, as you can see, he was kind enough to give us a graph on all four of those. And then um, around the turn there, we met... Uh, with Haley Martin, 
and she was a uh, she introduced us to uh, some of the books that she's done. Now she did the art for uh, the Bear comic here, and then the coloring for. Uh, this comic book here called The Rejects, um, which is kind of funny because that was my Little League baseball team's name. And then, of course, we had The Obsolete here. And uh, the, all those were autographed by the artist. And then, uh, lastly, we have uh, something here from the Pet Piranha booth um, where I was able to meet Jay Magnum and Lauren Lee. And this one's called Astral Vengeance Number 1. And uh, I really love the cover art on this one and uh, really looking forward to diving into that. Um, so as you can see, this was my, uh, my haul here. And, uh, you know, of course, I, as many of you know, I'm a professional wrestling enthusiast and had to pick up my uh, AEW Sting figure here. I know, you're amazed. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed the haul. We'll see you next time. Between the known and the unknown lies the mammoth.